Ukraine has expanded its request for cluster bombs from the U.S. to include a weapon that they plan to modify to drop the anti-armor bomblets on Russian forces using drones. The request was made as Ukraine faces a Russian counteroffensive in eastern Ukraine. Ukrainian officials had urged the U.S. Congress to persuade the White House to approve the shipment of the weapons while attending the Munich Security Conference held in Germany last month. However, it is uncertain whether the Biden administration will allow it. This is because cluster bombs, which have been banned by over 120 countries, typically release numerous small bomblets that can cause indiscriminate damage across a wide area and threaten civilians. The Mark 20 Rock I-2, also known as the CBU-100 cluster bomb, is an anti-tank American cluster bomb. It is a non-guided aerial weapon that is released from the aircraft. The Mark 20's body is constructed from high-quality aluminum and weighs slightly less than 500 pounds. While in mid-air, the container housing the bomblets is opened, causing 247 heat submunitions, known as Mark 118, to fall and detonate in the designated target zone. The dispersion of the bomblets on the ground is determined by the altitude at which the container is programmed to unlock. The submunitions in Mark 118 are PIBD type, which are stabilized by fins and detonate upon impact with the ground. The submunitions fuse becomes active both electrically and mechanically after they are released from the dispenser. This is because the rotor blades connect to the base fuse component. The fuse incorporates a discerning firing system that operates by triggering a small detonator located in the nose component upon hitting a hard surface. So why would Ukraine need the Mark 20 Rock I-2? There are more effective weapons available for dropping mine clusters on enemy positions. These include specialized HIMARS rockets and rounds developed for long-range artillery installations, which are already in use by the Ukrainian army. It is reported that Ukrainian soldiers do not intend to use the Mark 20 for its main purpose, but rather plan to dismantle the submunitions contained inside. The reason for doing so is not clear, but it is known that the Ukrainian armed forces use drones as a primary weapon in their fight against Russian forces. These drones are often equipped with improvised explosive charges, utilizing whatever materials are available. The Mark 20 cluster bomb submunitions are designed to achieve maximum penetration with minimal weight and have an aerodynamic shape for increased accuracy upon dropping. Each Mark 118 bomblet from the Rock A2 measures 343 mm long and 53 mm in diameter, with a weight of 1.32 pound that can penetrate up to 190 mm of armor. The reliability of the Mark 118 submunitions from the Mark 20, combined with their fin stabilization, makes them an attractive option for Ukraine's drone operations beyond their kinetic effects. Thus, the Ukrainian military plan to use these submunitions individually. They believe that the bomblets will prove to be more capable of penetrating Russian armored targets compared to the assortment of munitions that they had previously modified for use on their small drones. Reuters also reports that based on the Congress, Ukraine is requesting more 155mm dual-purpose conventional improved munition artillery cluster shells, each of which releases 88 submunitions upon firing. These weapons have been in use by the U.S. military since the 1970s and can be fitted with shaped or fragmentation charges that are effective against armor and personnel targets. According to Reuters, Textron Systems Corporation halted production of the Mark 20 in 2016, following the U.S. government's decision to stop selling the weapons to Saudi Arabia. However, an anonymous source from Congress informed Reuters that the U.S. military currently has over 1 million units of Mark 20 in their stockpiles. In 2005, Human Rights Watch HRW, reported that the U.S. had an inventory of 14.5 million Mach 118s. The Convention on Cluster Munitions, which was established in 2008, has banned these weapons in more than 100 countries. The reason for the ban is that unexploded bomblets from cluster weapons can remain in the target area, endangering civilian lives, especially children who might be curious. A law passed in 2009 during the Obama administration prohibits the export of cluster munitions that have a bomblet failure rate of 1% or higher. 
According to HRW, only a very small proportion of the cluster munitions in the U.S. arsenal meet the 1% standard. For these reasons currently, there is no indication that the White House will approve the transfer of cluster bombs to Ukraine. The Biden administration has been cautious in considering Ukraine's request for cluster bombs due to their potential for collateral damage. Throughout the conflict, Ukraine has made requests for weapons that were initially denied by the U.S., but have largely been granted, such as HIMARS missile launchers, Patriot air defense batteries, and Abrams tanks. However, the administration and some members of Congress may consider the request for cluster munitions to be going too far. Critics contend that when the bomblets disperse, they have the potential to injure and kill innocent civilians, and also have a significant rate of malfunction with unexploded bomblets remaining hazardous for several years after a conflict has concluded. This is in line with the reason why this Mark 20 weapon is banned in the first place. Although there are concerns about the harm cluster munitions can cause to civilians, U.S. military officials have acknowledged their usefulness as weapons. Also, there is also some support from some Congress members for the request to send Ukraine with the Mark 20 cluster bomb. According to an unnamed congressional aide, most Republicans are open to the request. Senator Lindsey Graham also voiced his support, stating that cluster munitions could be effective against mass formations and armor in areas where there are no civilians. Despite these, the U.S. has neither explicitly answered nor rejected Ukraine's request, likely because of its commitment to providing military support to Ukrainian forces. As Ukraine's ammunition and artillery shell supplies decrease rapidly, the U.S. wants to demonstrate its willingness to provide whatever is necessary within the limits of the law. It is also important to note that regardless of the limitations imposed on cluster bombs, several reports during the year-long conflict in Ukraine have revealed that Russia has used cluster munitions. The 300mm Smirch cluster bomb, which releases 72 submunitions over a large area, has been frequently mentioned and it is believed that these attacks have resulted in the deaths of numerous civilians. In brief, it is unclear how the Ukrainian military plans to modify a drone to draw cluster bomb submunitions, or which drone platform it will use. However, the Ukrainian military has successfully adapted drones to drop various types of munitions that are less specialized than the Mark 118s over the past year of fighting. Therefore, using Mark 118 submunitions for anti-armor operations should be relatively simple. This also highlights the extent to which allied countries' weapon supplies are being scrutinized for potential use in Ukraine's conflict with Russia. So do you think that the U.S. should supply Ukraine with this banned cluster bomb? Share your thoughts below and let us know. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.